morning and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church here in Ottawa, Tennessee. We are blessed that all of you are here with us in person. We are blessed you are joining us virtually, whether in real time or later. And we invite you to full participation in this worship service. If you do not already have a booklet, please go to sfaec.com and download our full text booklet. It contains all the hymns we are singing, all the scriptures we are reading, as well as all of our prayers. And we would love for you to join us fully this morning as we open with the first four verses of 287 for all the saints. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Daniel. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea. And the four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 149, starting on page 4. We will read it in unison. Hallelujah! Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, 
and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named. Not only is this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Of the Son of Man. 
Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. name. Bless the one who creates us, redeems us, and sustains us. Amen. I sing a song of the saints of God. This beloved hymn was actually penned almost a hundred years ago by a woman named Lesbia Scott, a mother who was raising her children and friends' children and then kind of became a mother of the community by doing things such as writing hymns and writing plays that the children could be part of and learn lessons from. And as the story goes, she wrote this hymn to help them realize that they too could be saints that they too could embrace that life of following Jesus and looking out for others and doing those things that show their love of Christ. And I suspect, as a parent myself, there was another thing going on at that time. For this beloved hymn is so beloved that people being queried a few years ago about what would be the one hymn you had on the proverbial desert island that you get stuck on, would you have? This was in the top 20. So cherished is this hymn. And it's music by John Henry Hopkins, a priest who was also an organist and who had the distinction of being the grandson of the first Bishop of Vermont, also John Henry Hopkins, wanted a tune that would lilt and capture a child in its singing. So the words were set to his tune. And as a parent, I know that at a certain age in childhood, children also get captivated by the concept of death. It is, as we proclaim in one of the anthems in the burial office on page 484, in the midst of life, there is death. And part of our maturing is realizing that over and over and over again. And it's a hard lesson that I think all of us continue to struggle with until we draw our own last breath. But it is a reality. And certainly in these two and a half years of pandemic, it seems as though in the midst of life there is death all around us, not only of people, but of things we cherished and loved and held dear to. But as we learned on our clergy conference this past two weeks ago, when we spent intentional time 
going into the grief, going into the loss. Grieving as a community, grieving individually about all that had changed. A refrain came up over and over again. And I think it is an underlying theme to Lisbia Scott's words. In the midst of death, there is life. Hear that again. In the midst of death, there is life. And that is what we celebrate today. As we remember those dear to us who have shaped us, who have formed us, who have given life to our lives, who shared themselves with us in a myriad of ways. And because the pandemic has gone on so long, and because it's the 31st anniversary of this church we call St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church, there are four people founding important members of our church that we lost in that period of time that I want to hold up to us again as examples of what they did with their lives and the way their lives continue to touch ours. The first to go of our founding families in the pandemic was Charlie Curl, June of 2020. Now Charlie could be a bit irascible. And Charlie loved from the very first time he met me to give me a little and insisted on calling me mom. <laughs> Charlie was so charming, I let him get by with it. I who do not like the term mother. Um, but Charlie was an important part of this founding community. He was there from the beginning, helping clean up that place called James County Courthouse, getting it ready for the first service. He faithfully took pictures. He wrote the hoot, that newsletter, was his baby year in and year out for many, many years. And we still have a whole collection of them in the office if you want to check them out. Charlie did a lot of things, obviously, and a lot of things quietly. For example, he was the one who made sure the trash got to the, the street, and that was when it had to roll down that street every week. Didn't tell anybody, just did it until he couldn't. And now a couple from 8 o'clock take that duty cheerfully and quietly, just as Charlie did. And Charlie had another passion. As his abilities failed, there was one he held on to, and that was sack packs. When we read the book that started sack packs, finding God in a bag of groceries, talking about the poor on Mount Eagle Mountain. Charlie looked at me and said, Mom, I know those people. I know them personally. And so each and every time we packed sack packs, Charlie had the fruit because he was going to make sure that every piece of fruit that went into those sack packs was blemish-free would be something that was a true gift to those children who knew what it was to be hungry. And then, a year and a few months later, we lost Suzanne McKenzie. Now, Suzanne and her parents were important founders of this church. And Suzanne did many jobs for this church including one that is often thankless, clerk of the vestry. And there's people in this room who know a little bit about being clerk of the vestry and the challenges of that job and the demands of that job. And she did it faithfully and well. She was a regular member of the altar guild, making sure as the altar guild continues to do that the place was set for the supper of the Lamb, that foretaste of the banquet we all look forward to. She did so many things quietly, and she would often come into church and leave church and not exchange much more than a high. 
but that's because she was a quiet person who did the work she did. Not the least of which, in the days that she had to step back from active things at church, was helping us go through archives so that she could do that at home as she cared for her mother, whose health was declining. And Suzanne was masterful at never arguing with her mother, not an easy thing for some of us. But whenever her mother said something that would make my hair stand up, Suzanne would laugh, and she'd just keep the conversation going. For years, she faithfully cared for Anna and was brought to tears as we planned Anna's funeral when she found out that Anna wanted Eucharistic Prayer C for her Holy Communion at her burial. It was the prayer that Suzanne loved, and she knew that it was a blessing and a gift from her mother as a last act to her. And a few weeks later, literally, we lost Ellen Hartsfield, the great seamstress of St. Francis. Many of the things hanging in the sacristy are thanks to her masterful needlework. Children around the city have been wrapped in blankets made by her that were used in the ICU. Others had hats made for them that we delivered to Head Start. She, in her last months, came faithfully here as we took on a project of crocheting mats out of plastic bags to give to the homeless so that they would have a barrier between their bedding and the wet ground. And she had a skill that took my breath away, cutting up plastic bags, be they white or blue or yellow or brown or whatever color the store used. She could take those strips of plastic and make a beautiful pattern for those mats. Such was her gift of needlecraft. And she continues to bless us by having made so many things that we use in our weekly worship of God. And then there's Sheila Crane, who, with her family, came to be one of the founding members, served as clerk and treasurer of the vestry, did so many things quietly. She was, too, on the altar guild for many years. And she, too, was quite the seamstress. But as all of us have honored her in different ways, the thing I remember most about Sheila was her ability to see possibility when none of us could. When our eyes seemed to be clouded, she had eagle eye vision about what we could do. And for all the naysaying and all the doubts, she would challenge us to be our best selves, to hold on to faith, to hold on to hope. Easter vigil this past year, in the middle of the vigil, my phone rang. I quickly silenced it, but in the instant, I knew who it was. It was Sheila joining us in prayer for that service that initially was done up on this hill when there was no building and it was so cold outside people's lips stuck to the silver chalice. <laughs> she was reminding us this, this was the dream they had dreamed all those years ago and we were enjoying it. Each of them may be gone from our sights, but they are not gone from our hearts. 
And they are constant reminders that in the midst of death, there is life. For their life continues to touch us, to inspire us, and to do exactly as Nathan Soderblom puts it, be the people who make it easier for others to believe in God. To be the people who make it easier for others to believe in God. And so on this day, we will be invited in just a few minutes to come forward and light lights for the many who have shaped and formed us. During the offertory, as we are blessed by our flute choir, you may come forward. I'll start us with taking a light off the altar and put it in the bowl of sand. And you're invited to come up and put candles in that sand to remember those who are dear to you this day because their lives are still touching our lives. And they touch them not only in you, but through you. Part of who each and every one of us are was formed and shaped by those saints <coughs> in our lives. And so as we remember the four I mentioned, let me remind you of some of the gifts not mentioned yet. Ellen Hartsfield, who each year taught us to give in thankfulness, <coughs> to set aside funds each day as a prayer of thanksgiving and offer them up to the United Thank Offering of the Episcopal Church Women. Sheila who at this time of year would remind us of how important our gifts to the church are. She faithfully saw, oversaw, and then carefully used the funds that are shared with us, always with the calculating eye of an accountant and the heart of a faithful child of Christ. Charlie, whose family left us with boxes upon boxes of pictures, and who we are still waiting for someone to help go through an archive, and volunteers are most welcome. <laughs> and Suzanne, who decided this church after all was bought for the kitchen, needed soup bowls. Because how could we have simple soup suppers without proper soup bowls? And we will pull those bowls out again in Advent as we return to simple soup suppers and study for the season of Advent. Their fingerprints are all around us. And those dear to you who are gone from our eyes but live deep in our hearts, their fingerprints are all over you. So on this day, when we do remember that in the midst of life there is death, and we honor and uphold those who have gone before us, let us also hold on to the belief and the hope that in the midst of death, there is life. For all the saints who from their labor rest, let us give glory, let us sing praises, let us say, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please stand. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 8. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and they all see the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Brian, our bishop. For the country, for sound government, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. For all on our prayer lists, including those on our short-term prayer list. Lynn Bagley, Catherine Bailey, Rusty Bird, Jeremy Clark, Becky and Lindsay Kordsmeyer, Bill and Vicki Dowley, Mark Elliott, Brett Harnett, Robert Hawks, Hazel Honeycutt, Christy and Darren Honeycutt, Gail Johnson, Cassidy Lewis, Allison Lonis, the Louis family, Laura Mays, Allison McCants, Matthew Pruce, Beverly Roberts, Lynette Rylander, Barbara Selman, Martha Solfest, Robbie Tullock, Buddy S. Miller, Mike Wilson, Suzanne Wood, Chloe Ramsey, Mary Virginia Woods, Allison, Christine, and family, Keith, Lisa, for those impacted by the main Chattanooga post office shooting, and for those whom you would now name.
Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, remembering today those celebrating birthdays this week, including Jeannie Greenwell, Lisa Mazzetti, Bill Barger, and those celebrating anniversaries, including Donna and John Crotow, those on our parish family prayer cycle, Shelley and Penny Martin, Shay Mason, Ed and Becky McCoy, and for area hospice programs and their workers. We will exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name forevermore. We pray for all who have died, including those killed in the main Chattanooga Post Office shooting that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray together in the words attributed to our patron saint. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We are delighted that you all are here today, and I just want to uh, give a couple of heads up. First of all, uh, we do welcome all at this table for communion, and we are that place where you can take communion however you are most comfortable. We ha still have the mini chalices, which have both the bread and wine contained in a single container. You peel back the foil to take the bread, flip it over, and you can peel back the foil to take the wine. It's about a thimbleful. You may also receive a waf wafer only if you prefer that. I will have that. I will also have an intention cup, and if you want your wafer dipped in wine, I will help you do that. We will also have a common cup, the chalice, and um, we have Sue's on that today, and she will help you if you want to drink from the common cup. You can take the bread from me and then go to the common cup. And you can also get a blessing. Whatever you all want, we are here to offer because this is the Lord's table. And each and every one of us is invited to this banquet. So please come forward. The other thing is, 
and I want to uh, get, get you all started on this. As I mentioned in the sermon, we're inviting you to come forward and light a candle in memory of those that you are remembering today, those you are honoring today. And so I invite you, there's two bowls of sand, there's a big container of candles, please do come forward. We are blessed with our flute choir today. They will be playing during the offertory. So if you're nervous about walking in front of people, people are gonna be listening to them, not watching you. <laughs> Just a little heads up. On this day, when we consider these offerings, our prayers is part of the offertory. Let us remember that we have been blessed by the witness and the lives of others who made their lives offering to God. And may we come forward mindful of Christ's words to love one another as he has loved us and given himself as an offering, a sacrifice in love.
All things come of you, O Lord. We continue in prayer in the middle of page 18. This Eucharist is offered with special intention that surrounded by these lights, we remember and hold fast to the reality that in the midst of death, there is life. Let the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of light and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with you created them to rejoice in the splendor of your Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much, that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of, of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and ascension. I'm sorry, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, waiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life, 
and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, preserve it in peace. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have sown the seeds and all who serve in this part of your vineyard, known as St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church of Ottawa, Tennessee. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Frank Bagley, Helen Bennett, Leonard Bennett, Betty Boland, James Boland, Joe Bittner, Ed Cahill, Betsy Carpenter, Chuck Carpenter, Cora Corbin, Sheila Crane, Martha Cummings, Charlie Curl, Beverly Dean, Anne DeVoe, Irving DeVoe, Charlie Dickens, Allison Fulham, Eddie Gannon, Nicolette Gershman, Laura Flynn, Ellen Hartsfield, jo Joan Huckmuth, Joe Huckmuth, Martha Hoffman, Jerry Honeycutt, Wallace Hudson, Bob Lawson, Alma Lee, Willard Lee, Ethel Martin George Martin, Betty Richardson McCants, Suzanne McKenzie, Betty Morris, Mark Parsons, Dot Patton, Lauren Pitts, Jean Reed, Jim Reed, Nell Redman, Matthew Christian Reynolds, Sterling Rutledge, Andy Shue, Joanne Shue, Ida Slowinski, Joe Slowinski, Helen Smith, Dan Sosha, Betty Solfest, Lester Solfest, Ed Tolley, Molly Tucker, Joanne Tucker, Tom Tucker, Doug Tullock, Jack Wagner, Phil Wallace, Kay Willis, Fred Wood, and those you would name aloud. The Reverend Linda Bring them to the place of eternal joy and light, and grant that we may find our inheritance with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with blessed Francis and all the saints who have found age in you in ages past. We praise you to be with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. 
of God. Josh, the body.
at the top of page 16 with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. I will keep them brief. One of the gifts of, of, of having people up here is they make sure I stay on track, which is not always easy. Uh, I'm going to begin with a confession so y'all know, because all of you are going to ask. My surgery itself went well, but one of the problems is I still need a second surgery, so I'm living with constant double vision right now. It looks full in here. There's so many of you, you have no idea how great it looks. But because of that, you will see me being very cautious as I walk, and I'm sometimes stumbling on words trying to figure out where I am in my space. But that does not mean I cannot do my job. So I just want it to be totally honest. Y'all will just watch them help me compensate as I knock bread to the ground because I had no idea I'd done it. But we are busy this week, and I hope you noticed something as you drove up. Does that parking lot look spectacular or what? We are so blessed to see this big step on our building campaign completed. Lord love him. We got the call Monday night when I was going into surgery Tuesday morning and Mike Bolin was over here and oversaw everything in this unexpected moment of we're coming and we are blessed it looks as good as it did we got to practice Semper Gumby our sack packers learned how to change time and do it a different time and we're so appreciative to all the flexibility that people practice this week we continue this week with our usual offering Monday night is yoga Tuesday and Thursday are music lessons in the parish hall Wednesday night, we pack sack packs at 5.15. We'll do worship at 6. And because we didn't get a chance to do 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 17 on through the end of chapter 12, if you read it, we're still going to do it. If you didn't read it, it's too, not too late to do so. Read it and come join us. We'd love for you to be part of this exciting discussion we're having about this chapter, these chapters in 1 Samuel. And... Thursday evening, we have um, Tai Chi going on. Saturday, we have a very special offering out of the diocese, and you can still sign up. It's the Evangelism Conference. Three years ago, Josh and I got to go hear Jerusalem Greer, who is the head of the Evangelism Office for the Episcopal Church come. She's an exciting speaker, she's engaging, she's wonderful and inspiring, and it's not too late to sign up. And my Buick is going to uh, go to Miraville, so we'll get everybody up there that needs a ride. Also at that conference, we will have the head of technology for the Episcopal Church. And so if you are interested in all things technical, we're going to have the expert there. And we'd love for you to be part of this. And finally, a bonus I just learned about this week. Brian Peter Sellers, who I've been blessed to know for almost two decades, whose passion is about care of creation and gardening and making our best use of the earth God has blessed us with, is also speaking. So I invite you all to consider going. It's absolutely free, and it will be a conference well worth the time you make for it. So know that that's going on. And finally, it's the first Sunday in November. So that means it's birthday and anniversary Sunday. And because our former organist, Bill Barger's birthday is this week, we're going to gather around him. 
all November birthdays and anniversaries, please come to Bill Barger. <laughs> well, you know, occasionally you get surrounded. You've surrounded us with music for years. Is that it? Okay, we take stand-ins. <laughs> if you've got a family member with a November birthday. No? Okay. All right. Well, perfect. Thank you. We need people to do that. So we're remembering Susie and Sandy and Bill's birthday. Oh, God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on these, your servants, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Susie. <laughs> Please stand for the blessing. May God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the holy and undivided Trinity guard you, save you, bring you safely to that country where God lives and reigns, and we will meet those we love again. Amen.
Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.